Well, the governing board of the San Marcos Unified School District has named Dr. Andy Johnson as their next superintendent. Superintendent Johnson joins us now to discuss the new position. Congratulations, Andy. When do you take over? Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I begin on July 1st. All right, so you're technically still have Lakeside in your title, but in uh, the 1st of July, you will have San Marcos in your title. Correct. Yes, I'm still superintendent of Lakeside. Lots of work still to be done to close out the year and get ready for next year. Uh, and then I'll be joining the San Marcos team uh, yeah, on July 1st. Well, I think a lot of people will draw quick comparisons. They see a lot of kids going to school in face-to-face -face in Lakeside, and they don't see that in San Marcos. Are you going to bring a little Lakeside philosophy to the San Marcos area? Well, you know, I'll be honest with you, I'm just now getting up to speed, so I, I don't know that I can speak with a lot of specificity about some of the challenges, but I know that um, there is a desire for students to be in school, and um, I know that the, the governing board and the staff up there are working hard on that. So, um, again, I, I'm not sure that I can I can speak you know, really specifically about it, but um, yes, I think we, we do want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to get students in school, and I'm, I'm confident uh, that by next fall, uh, things will look much more normal. Well, then let me share with you one of the little things that is whispered in my ear as it relates to the San Mar Marcos district is that that it's, you know, it's growing. It's very popular. It's a very popular place now. It's growing quite rapidly and that there's just not enough school for the number of kids. In other words, they need more schools. The reason why they can't do the face to face like they uh, like a lot of people want is they don't have the space to spread out to to create the distance. Could you speak to the need for more schools in San Marcos? Um, you know, I've heard a little bit of that so far. I know that it is a growing district, which is an, an amazing thing when most of the districts in, uh, there are 42 school districts in San Diego County and most of uh, most of us are in declining enrollment. So uh, the fact that, that families are moving into San Marcos and there's still building going on there tells you that it's a, it's a destination district and people want to be there. So no, that That'll be one of the first things that I'm going to want to find out and, and get a little bit of a sense of what are some of the space constraints, because I do understand that that has been one of the constraints in, in getting kids back to school. Well, the space constraints turns into financial constraints because it costs money to build more schools, especially when you plowed a lot of money into that great high school that they have. Yeah. And so, again, that's one of those things that I'm going to have at the top of my list to kind of find out and get a sense of uh, where the finances are and where the space needs are and where the facilities needs are uh, so that we can make sure that we're doing the very best to get all the kids in seats. All right. Well, then speak to us in philosophical terms. What is your objective when you take over the San Marcos job? Yeah, my, my objective really is to continue to work with the, this amazing team and a, and a, and a very dedicated uh, governing board uh, to continue to um, you know move the students forward. This again, San Marcos is a district where it's known for excellence. It's known for uh, high standards of, of, of instruction and academics. Um, and my my vision is really just to continue to make it that destination district in uh, in North County, uh, where students are are prepared for college and career, and that they when they leave us they have choices. They they can do anything that they want. Um, and so I'm very very excited to to start uh, getting to know folks and talk more with the governing board and talk more with the staff um, and see where we need to move forward. You know, I've spent a little time in Lakeside, and I know a few folks out there, and they, and I know how special a place it is. Can you speak to the melancholy involved in leaving? what has been home for you? Yeah, I appreciate that question. You know, it is it is bittersweet for me. I mean, I've been there for six years. Lakeside is a very, it's a tight community. The families are very, very supportive of the schools. Um, even, I mean, through this pandemic has been nothing that anybody asked for. It's been a challenge for everybody, but our community out here on Lakeside has been, has been really amazing. Um, and it is, it is bittersweet. You know, I have lots of connections there and I spend a lot of time in our school sites. So I know everybody in the district and there've been some tears and, um, you know, some, some lumps in the throat and those kinds of things. Uh, but, uh, leaving the district in, in very good hands, our board of trustees is very, very strong and they're going to make a great selection going forward. And I'm, I'm very confident for continued success for Lakeside. And then more of a global question or a United States question. Are you confident that in, in, in the near future, High school is going to look or school is going to look like it used to look with kids running around. Are we going to be are we going to get past the pandemic fear as it relates to masks and things like that? I absolutely do think so. I think I think masks will probably be with us for a little while, just in what I'm hearing. Um, but there's one very interesting thing I think we've learned is that before the pandemic, there was actually a lot of talk philosophically in, in educational circles about, um, you know, brick and mortar. How important is a brick and mortar environment? Can we do more, you know, distance learning and online learning? And then we were forced into it. And I think we found that, yes, for some students, it works very well. But for others, no, that social interaction and, and the traditional school setting is really, really important 
important for kids. So I think that's, if there's a silver lining to the pandemic, I think we've learned about the value of in-person, um, you know, on-campus learning for our students. So I think that, I think that will be our norm uh, going forward. And I know the legislature in California is very dedicated to, to getting back to, you know, quote unquote normal uh, for the fall. Well, Andy, I think it was your quote right here on the Good Morning San Diego. It said the one best thing about the pandemic is it showed kids the value of going to school face to face. So uh, I, I think truer words have not been spoken on this airwave. So thank you very much for that. And we wish you all the success in the world in San Marcos. Thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate it. All right. Still ahead on Good Morning.